Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the TLC's original series, 90 Day Fiance, Before the 90 Days. Season 4, Episode 9, entitled, Should Have Known Better. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. So we start off with Varya and Godfrey, and she's still upset learning that he has a criminal past, that he is technically a felon. And he sold drugs and he spent 30 months in prison, but it was something that happened very long ago. And he's having difficulty about that, but he's still understanding that she's having a hard time dealing with that. But I honestly think she doesn't care. She has other Americans that she's talking to on the side. And I think this is her good scapegoat, quote unquote, to get out of this situation because she seems so pressed about it. Now, I know that he should have mentioned it earlier, but I don't know. Just from my point of view, it's like, eh, is it really that serious? And Godfrey says, you know, I really didn't tell her because I was ashamed and embarrassed. Um, and she thinks that her future with him will be disrupted because he has this past. And he's telling her, look, I'm different. I got my college degree. I later on got my graduate degree. And I haven't looked back since. I haven't backtracked into old behaviors from a long time ago. And she says something that's really interesting. And she says, well, you know, Russia, we have this saying to where people don't change. But you've changed and I see that you're a good person let's try to move forward and let's see how this goes but I really think that you should tell my mother and he's basically saying well you know why do you think that we should tell your mother is this something that your mother should know I thought that was kind of odd why, why does she feel like her mother has to know is she using her mom as a way to say well my mother doesn't like it either so this is the final <laughs> nail in the coffin with this situation so Stephanie and Erica were still in that situation and Stephanie's saying that she's been there for a week and she feels alone and she doesn't know anybody in that country and it upsets her when Erica just gets up and walks off and she can't call her mom because her mom still doesn't know that she's bisexual so she feels like she's really alone and she doesn't like to feel uncomfortable and she says what's really getting her is that I don't want to be sexual with somebody, especially Erica, because I hardly know her. And I find that really interesting because you guys have had this sexual tension for so long and you guys have talked about it. She even mentioned that her YouTube page is very sexual. So it really makes me believe that Stephanie, is this the real you? What you portray to everybody else, what you've been portraying to Erica this whole time is that really you or were you just really gouging for attention like that? Erica comes by and she brings her flowers as a peace offering, but it does still bother Erica that she's so controlling and that there's clearly some things that they have to work through. So Erica is always giving this energy of, hey, let's try to work things out. But it's really frustrating because every time that she does that, Stephanie has something controlling to throw back at her. And Stephanie explains to Erica, look, you know, my ex has lied to me, especially when it came to like a dating app. Um, and she's saying that she's upset that she's had an intimate relationship with others, but not her. And Erica says, you know, I've always told her, excuse me, she's upset at the fact that she's had intimate relationships with her friends, speaking of Erica. But Erica says, you know, I've always told her that this entire time that we've been talking is something that I share with her. But the fact that she's finally mentioning that it bothers her, I guess that's a key point because she never mentioned that it bothered her before, but now it's bothering her. And Stephanie finally admits that I don't have this trusting nature. Um, and Erica seems very irritated just by Stephanie. She's she's over it. Lisa and Us Usman, baby love. 
<laughs> Issa saying in her commentary to the producers, look, I've done everything to get his mother's blessing. I bought a goat. I wore this country's clothing and I did everything. So she's coming off very selfish. And it's very evident that you're doing all of these things for you. You're not doing it for the sanctity and for the permission from his mom. You're being very, very selfish. So after getting the no, the capital no from the mother, they decide that they want to call Muhammad, which is Usman's brother, the eldest brother, because maybe he can convince the mother that they're truly in love. So Muhammad says to, to the producers that my mother was shocked because for one, she's old, she's white, and she's not from his tribe. So his mother found it very difficult to give this blessing. And Lisa says, you know, I'll do whatever I need to do to convince the mother that, you know, where we want to get married and we're not going to give up. This is the most respectful I've seen Lisa. And she's putting on this front just to get this okay from the mom. But what I found really interesting is that Usman is saying that, you know, I really want to go to America. So <laughs> we need this permission. And that kind of threw me back like... Lisa, did you hear that? He's saying he really wants to go to America and he's telling Muhammad that, okay, there's better opportunities there and the economy and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow, I mean, uh-oh, that's a little red flag that, that maybe you missed or you heard, but you tried to overlook it. <laughs> and Lisa's saying, you know, oh, if we don't get her blessing, you know, we can't get married. But like I said in the previous uh, <laughs> review for the last episode, regardless of what that mother thinks, I, th I still think that she'll go behind that family's back and want to get married anyway. Now we go to Dave. I know this isn't really nice, but I'm calling him Psycho Dave because he's really been acting kind of psycho since he's been there. And he's saying, you know, he's still trying to get um, in contact with Lana and David is upset because he spent these thousands of dollars in this chat and still hasn't seen this woman. He's gone out there so many times and met, met train stations scheduled for cruises and this person has never showed up. So he checks the chat room and sees that she's online and he says, hello, how are you doing? It's good morning to you. And you know, he's like, well, no, I'm still in your town. Um, and let her know that, hey, maybe we should meet for dinner. And she says yes, but then closes the chat. <laughs> I bet it was a, oh, wow, he's still here? Like, oh, crap, you know, let me, let me log out this chat. So it's just like, Dave, are you not seeing these red flags that she's dodging you at every point that she can? And when she thought you were in America, she's like, oh, yeah, come out. You know, that's fine. But once um, you're in her country, she just keeps disappearing. Like, come on, Dave. So, anywho, he goes to the same restaurant. He orders flowers and, and champagne. And um, he's sweating a lot. He's really, really nervous at the restaurant. He's like, I brought, brought another shirt because I'm sweating. So, time goes on. He's there for like two hours and no one is showing up. And he's finally getting this reality wake-up call. Um, several meetups and no shows. Several meetup at this restaurant and no answers. So he pays and he leaves. And even the employee at the restaurant says, you know, he does this same thing. He comes in with flowers, buys champagne, and nobody shows up. And it's a shame he have to waste these uh, good flowers. And she just takes the flowers, put his, puts the vase up on the bar. And like, oh, well, I can show this to my customers. Ash and Avery. Oh my goodness, Ash. He, he has answers for everything, doesn't he? <laughs> but, you know, they're spending time together before going back to his hometown. And she still has an issue that he never answers questions directly. She wants to know um, what it is that he does exactly in his career. What is it exactly? Um... And he's saying, that, hey, I kind of told you how I work and, you know, what I do. And she's like, but you have all of these female customers um, that you work with. How does that go? When somebody says they come to you relation for relationship advice, how does that fluidity go? And instead of just answering the question, he, question, he seems very defensive. And Avery takes note of that. And she says, well, you know, I just find it really interesting because... 
this morning, you know, you were showing me all of these things on your phone. And I noticed you had over 60 text messages from women. And Ash, without thinking, he does a natural response. And he says, well, you have no place to ask me that because, you know, I'm, I'm single. I'm single now. <laughs> and there's this pause. And he, Ash has this look like, oh, man, like I kind of snitched on myself. And, you know, she says, oh, you're, you're single, huh? And he can't say anything at, in that moment. So we go back to Yolanda. Oh, Miss Yolanda and talking to Williams. <sighs> we love her, but oh my goodness. She reminds me of the gentleman that worked at the nail salon, the black guy. And he was just sending all this money. But anywho, they, they're, they're, they're. Common sense is, is ranking on the same level. But anywho, she meets up with her daughter and she reveals to her daughter that she's been getting threats and the emails that she's been getting, they're saying that, hey, you know, if you don't give us what we want, we're going to release these photos. And the daughter says, well, what kind of photos? And the she, Yolanda lies and says, well, you know, they're just photos of me. She didn't say that they were nude, which is quite, mm, why are you not telling your daughter that? And the daughter is saying that this person is Williams. It's the same person. This is the scam that they're doing. And Yolanda is saying, well, it doesn't sound like anything he would do. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is him. I think he was hacked. And, and the daughter was saying, yeah, when a scammer gets caught, they're going to be really upset. And she says, you know, I'm sorry that you're having to go through this, but he's scamming you. And Yolanda is just completely clueless and says, you know, I love him. And I don't think this is anything that he would do. Darcy, oh my goodness, poor Darcy. I want to feel sorry for her, but I don't. The actions of Tom were wrong, but she received so many red flags before, and she does repetitive behavior, so I'm just like, ah. But she um, is still heartbroken, and Tom has moved on, and she wants to meet up with her sister. She leaves the hotel, and the sister says, you know, well, what happened? And she tells her about Tom and how they tried to talk and there was so much negative energy and tension that they didn't get anywhere. He confirmed that he was talking to somebody else and I had had enough of it and I even walked away. And even when walking away, he said some really mean comments telling me that I had gained weight and really just trying to hurt my feelings. And, you know, Stacy is just saying, you know, I'm so sorry that you had to go through this. And, but at the same time, I'm glad that it's over. You have your answers and you can move on. Now, I hate to say this, you guys, but the next few scenes, Darcy has some of the most ugliest cry faces I've ever seen. And it just, <laughs> the producers just go back and forth with these shots of these 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 expressions that she's having with these tears. And it's just this, my head is going to explode facial expressions but there are no tears and then we got miss stacy that joins her making all these cry faces but no tears just just pain faces i guess but i just thought that was interesting you would think that the producers would edit that out you know but they were like nah not only are we gonna get put these shots in there but we're gonna get like super close zoom ins of these crying faces Back to Stephanie and Erica. So they get ready to go to a party to meet up with some of Stephanie's friends because Stephanie really wants, excuse me, Erica really wants Stephanie to see her friends because her friends are a big part of her life. And before they head out, they have a little laughing moment where um, Stephanie recognizes how Erica's style is really out there and comfortable and, you know, and Erica laughs and she's just saying, well, you know, this is just my style. And Stephanie's just a little bit more... Um, compared to Erica with you know colors and styles that we're used to and Erica's style matches her personality so that was cute to see. Stephanie does mention that it bothers her that Erica has been intimate with her friends um, and that it bothers her that when she gets there everybody's kind of cool and there's not any in negative energy but she also notices that Erica drinks and um, she's just not cool with that. And everybody else is having fun. And she sees that Adam is there, their friends and seeing them hug bothers Stephanie. So she asked 
you know, the guy, Adam, do you still have feelings for her? And Adam says, no, we have a past. I care for her. I love her, love her because of who she is, but there's nothing going on. And Stephanie says, she's, you know, I'm a prude, um, but your YouTube channel says something else. What you marketed and what you put out there when you met Erica, that's what she probably pulled you to her. Okay. Um, but her friend Adam says, you know, you should trust Erica. I mean, if she's telling you that we're done, then 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 that's what it is. And and, and Erica's sick of her being jealous. And Erica's done and walks away again. So Ash and Avery, Ash says, you know, well, I didn't mean to say single now, but I mean, I was before. <laughs> and Avery has this look like, Okay, that's not what you meant to say, but you're saying that um, you're single. And I hope that she recognizes all of these red flags because he said it being caught off guard. And he really wasn't watching his words and taking his time. And the fact that he said he's single now and he realized what he said and it wasn't an immediate reaction to say, oh, I didn't mean that. I don't mean single, but he snitched on himself. If she doesn't recognize these red flags, anything that happens from this point on is completely on her. So we got Godfrey and he's with the family and she feels that, you know, he needs to tell her mom about his criminal past. So they go to speak with the mom, but then her brother shows up. So now he's telling the news to the mom and the brother. He tells the mom about his past and the mother insists, I knew there was something off about him. And the mother says, you know, I don't approve of, of you going to America and you need to stay home with me. And the brother is saying the same thing. And even the dog is sitting there in the middle like, oh, this is entertaining. What? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? And Godfrey's saying, OK, well, I don't speak this language. Can you tell me what's going on? And she has this energy like she doesn't want to tell him what's going on but you can tell from body language the mother up is upset and the brother is upset we go back to erica and stephanie and erica is saying i don't understand why stephanie is so upset i've told her this information before and stephanie says well i just ask a simple question and the friends are like you know this really isn't Erica's behavior to to be so down and sad about everything. She's usually bubbly and fun. And you just, if you can't understand her past, I don't know what's so hard about that. In her past, she's telling you that there's no relationship anymore. And these individuals that she's been intimate with, you shouldn't have to worry about it. And Stephanie says, you know, no matter what I say, you know, no matter what I ask, I'm the bad guy. And she calls Heather her friend that's in the States. And Heather says, you know, I'm sorry that you're going through this. Just try to stay calm and relax the time that you have left there and don't stress over it. You know, this is something that you don't have any control over. If it's not working out, just hang in there. And once again, Stephanie starts with the crying with no tears. But it's just <laughs> funny to me how as she's talking with Heather, she's supposedly crying. And then when Heather says, OK, well, I'll talk to you some other time. She's like, oh, OK. And it's just like the crying, quote unquote, crying goes away it's like okay stephanie so lisa and usman oh my god so muhammad didn't have any luck with convincing the mother um about getting married so they figure it's a good thing to go to mosque because his mother will be there and his mother is very devoted muslim and usman says you know I want her to go. I want to go to America. So we need to make sure this is right. And I think it's funny because it keeps reiterating like, hey, I really want to go to America. OK, um, another red flag, Lisa. I hope you recognize what's going on. Um, and Usman is saying, hey, we're going to go and um, we're going to go to mosque and we're going to pray. And maybe my mom will see this as you're trying and you're praying with her, which would be a good look. So when they show up, the mother's there. She's getting ready to go into mosque. And, you know, that he's trying to tell Lisa, you know, you need to cover up and wash your face, wash your hands and your feet. Just praying for for a mosque. And as they're doing that, he's explaining to her, whatever they do is what you do. OK, just follow what the women are doing and lisa when she gets in she's you know taking note that wow I'm, I'm christian 
And I hope she notices that I'm doing whatever to convince her that I want her son's hand in marriage. But this is just so different because the men are in the front and the women are in the back. And this is different. And the mother is going on with the mosque, the other women. She's following her her in her best way to follow how they're praying and what they're doing. Um, and it's th- it just throws her off. So after mosque... Um, You know, Usman says, you know, it's pretty good. She didn't do well, but it's pretty good for her first time um, in mosque and praying. And the mother is still saying, you know, she's too old. She's not from your village. She's not from your tribe. Um, She's just she's I don't trust you going to America because they don't treat black people well in America. And just no. And Lisa seems frustrated because she's like well I prayed and I bought that goat and I'm wearing this thing and it's just kind of like if this is going to be the spouse for the rest of your life it's not going to just going to be this one thing you have to understand that that's his religion you have to understand that that's his way of life so once again just being very selfish her ways are have always been very selfish she's doing what she has to do to to get what she wants she she thinks that she's giving her the moon and doing all of these things when it's really just you trying to cram and do like a cliff notes of respect here Um, because we haven't seen her this respectful and this calm the whole entire season so she's really really playing that role to get what she wants so then the last bit of information we see David he calls his friend Jim to tell him of again that she didn't show up And David says, you know, I have her address and I want to drive there to see her. And Jim, (laughs) without saying, what, are you crazy? He says it in a very formal way and says, "Uh, do you think that uh, that would be a good thing? Uh, Are you sure? And David says, you know what, I've spent all this money. And yeah, I, I, I need answers. I've been going through all of this and yes, I need to see if this is where she lives. And, you know, Jim just gets to the point where he's just like, hey, I wish you luck, man. You know, be careful. And I'm calling him creepy days because how is it that you want to pop up to somebody's address that you found that um, this person used when y'all were supposed to go on a cruise together? I just thought that was just like, I know that you're desperate, but clearly this person does not want to see you. And you spent all of this money in this chat. That's how that person makes their money. So we do see that he's found the address. He wants to pop up and see her. He goes to the address that he has. And that is the end of the episode. We see that the door opens slightly, but we don't get to see who's inside. So that is the end of the episode until we get more information. Once again, with everyone, Darcy, girl, you knew what the situation was with Tom. He wasn't the settle down type. He's a very selfish man. He's shown you that from the beginning. So the fact that you're heartbroken doesn't surprise me. Same thing with Miss Yolanda Miss and, and Mr. Williams. Um, You sent this man seductive pictures of yourself, nude photos. And now you're dealing with the uppercut punch that you're being scammed, honey, and you're not choosing to see reality. So I'm actually kind of sad for her when she really gets the eye opener that she's being scammed. And even though it's sad that she hasn't been in a relationship and she put this trust in someone that she hasn't seen, I hope it's a wake up call of what not to do in the future. Um, As far as everybody else, the same thing with Avery and Ash. Avery, you are getting all of the red flags that you can possibly see. Please don't ignore those. Erica and Stephanie just need to split their ways. They probably had awesome chemistry online and over the phone, but meeting in person is just really, really odd. Both of them haven't come out to their families. They're hiding secrets and they're meeting up. And they're really not getting along with Erica's friends. It just doesn't seem right. I honestly feel that this was a fantasy online. Erica was attracted by her personality and what she did on YouTube and the behavior when they talked online. Because I don't know if you remember at the beginning of the season, every time that Stephanie would talk to Erica, she would have a bra on with lingerie and, you know, really, really open and seductive. And now you're saying, well, I don't drink. I don't party. I'm not going to sleep with her. I'm not... 
you're really giving a different tone um but let me know what you think subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and also follow me on instagram at the same profile name official bun underscore e until next time check out all of the other playlists movies television reviews and recaps and just binge watch stay safe i love you guys until next time bye